Hello and welcome to Knowledge by Nature. In today's video, I want to show a little bit of how we're using Story of the World and give you a flip through of the activity book. If this is something that you are interested in, stick around. All right, welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time here, I am a homeschool mom to a third grader. We love all things books, homeschool, and sharing our journey with you. And if that is something that you are interested in, I would love if you consider hitting that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. All right, so we have used Story of the World for quite some time now. We are on level two, the Middle Ages. And originally, I did not purchase the activity book. However, we are, let's see. So we are on chapter 14 of, let's see here, 42. So we have quite a ways to go still in this. We only do history once, sometimes twice a week. And so it does go slower, but I'm fine with that. But I originally didn't get the activity book because I didn't feel like we used it very much with Story of the World 1. Then I decided I would just get the actual reader, but then here re recently I found that I'm kind of pulling for extra resources a lot more and I decided to see if I could find an activity book used because when all possible, I try to purchase use to save money, and that's just what I try to do. So I did. I was able to find this used. The only problem is it had this, like, big bend in the um, spine, which is fine. It's just in the cover, not the spine. Excuse me. But this thing is huge. It is quite a bit bigger than Story of the World 1. But if you're not familiar with Story of the World activity book, I did want to give you kind of a peek into this and just show you what all is included in this. I am glad that I went ahead and got it because I am enjoying having the teacher's guide back and I'm also enjoying the extra resources that come with it. Now, you do not need this. Like I said, we have been doing this all year without this resource and we have also done story of the world one mainly without this i used it for a very very short period of time but as we kind of modify and change and just kind of come into our own i find i end up figuring out what i like now your story of the world activity book two and i think yes this is the edited one so they're kind of updated they're revised edition but what's really neat that I noticed about this is that they have, they also have the original text in here too. So if you were able to find volume two, but it wasn't the revised edition, you can still use this, which I think is really, really neat. So here at the front, we have our table of contents with all of the chapters. Each chapter is broken into the story of the world, the original text, the story of the world, revised text, the activity book, parent's guide, the map answer key, blank student map, coloring card and review, coloring page and review card. Of course, you're able to copy this for your own home use. And then we have how to use this activity book. It goes into multi-level teaching. You don't have to use it just for one grade. This could definitely be a whole home subject and different pronunciation guides which is really handy sometimes and then more pronunciation guides and more and then we get into the first chapter so i'm actually just going to come to the one that we have been working on just because i'm very familiar with this one and it's easier to use up at the very top here, we have the Encyclopedia Cross References. So we have the Usborne World History, and then we have the Kingfisher History here. And it tells you what book and page number, and that is actually 
back, if we go back to how to use this, it says right here that we have provided encyclopedia cross references to the appropriate pages in the Kingfisher Illustrated History of the World, the Kingfisher History Encyclopedia Revised, the Usborne Book of World History, and the Usborne Internet Linked Encyclopedia of World History. You do not need all four of these. We only have one. We have the Usborne Internet Linked Encyclopedia of World, of world History. It works fine. We don't need all of these other ones. There's also the internet where you can also dive deeper if you want to. So that is what these are right here up at the top. That's what those are referencing the page numbers. Now we have the Viking invasion. And so you'll see chapter 14 has this section, Eric the Red and Eric's son, the Norse gods. Then we have all of this extra stuff. So each chapter usually has more than one section. And so if we go to chapter 14 here, we can see that the very first section is the Viking invasion. So the first thing that I would do is I would read this. Your child could read this. You could both read this. And you would, we have a little image of the map here. So again, if you don't have this, you are getting to see the map. You are getting to see um, some of the images, and then we would stop right here. So this would be section one of chapter 14, and I would come here to the review questions. I would ask the review questions, and then I would have her do a narration exercise. Now, we have, out of the activity book, that we have a coloring page. So she could color that page while I was reading. She could color it afterwards. You could save it for a different time. And then we have the second section where we would read the second part of chapter 14, which would be Eric the Red and Eric's son. So usually it's not a ton of reading for each section. And then you can get into doing the review questions, the narrations, and then you go to the third section in this chapter, which happens to be the Norse gods. Here we have the Norse gods section. And then that would be the end of chapter 14. When we completed section three, we would do the review questions again, the narration exercise, and then we have these additional history readings. Now at the beginning of the book, I think it suggests that you do your sections and then you come and do your additional history. Here are like some corresponding literature suggestions. So extra readings. Here's like a magic tree house, number 15, Viking ships at sunrise. We have some map work that we would work on like where all of this was happening. We have the coloring page, which is right here. And then there are different projects. So it says that you can kind of do your sections, come in here, do some more reading, maybe tie in some of the coloring pages at that time. And then we have different projects. Now this isn't meant for you to do every single project, every single extra reading. It's just extra resources that you can have if you want it. And that's where I was. I was having to pull for a lot of these things because we wanted to go a little bit deeper because this stuff's really interesting for us. And so I decided that it was time to just go ahead and make it a little bit easier on myself by getting this. Here are some of the projects that are in this specific chapter. We also have a craft project where we're making a Viking boat. We make a Viking um, pendant, which is part of page 56, 57, and 58. If you look closely, this is referencing the student pages 56 and 57, which are in the back of the book. So here they are labeled student page, and so we would go to 56 and 57, and here we are seeing, here is the map that it referenced. That's the coloring sheet that it referenced, building a Viking boat. Here are some of the extra accessories that you could put on the Viking boat. Here is the pendant making and the brooch templates, and you can use these for like little shrinky dinks and things like that. So that is the activities that are all listed here, and it references what student page that they're on. Again, we have 
full directions on how to accomplish the project. Here is another craft project where they could make a Viking longhouse. Um, again, all sorts of directions, how to decorate it, different suggested materials that you're gonna need, a cooking project. Um, you could make a Viking bread. And then that is the end of chapter 14. So whether you have the revised edition or you have the first edition, this still works. So you can still do all of these things and you can have all of these extra resources right at your fingertips, which I really, really like. So now if I get to the end of the teacher section, which this section here is the part that is the teacher's guide. I have seen where people go ahead and like cut the spine, take it to Office Max or something and have it broken up into different sections. And being that this is so huge, that would be really, really nice. I don't know that I'll do that, but that's an idea. If you don't want like this whole cumbersome thing with you all the time, you could go have this spiraled and have just your teacher's manual separate from everything else. Here is where we get to the map work answers. So every chapter has map work. So if we go to chapter 14 with the Viking longship, you can see where we should have done purple, red, blue, green, orange, and it tells us exactly how the maps should look like. This, depending on how old your student is, depends on how much you use some of these resources. Then we get to the student book pages. And so all of these resources here, so you can see it's pretty much a little over half of the book is the student resources, the activity book. And again, you can copy it for your home, make copies of these coloring pages and all sorts of activities. I just really, really like it. It's not, it's not all coloring pages. You can see right up here, let's see. You could make um, Sinbad spoon puppets when we were reading about Sinbad. Here is just different little maps and games that you can play. And then there are a lot of coloring pages also, which is perfect for those smaller ones. In the very, very back, there are review cards. And this is suggested to cut these out and review the different chapters as you go through everything. Go back and it kind of summarizes your whole chapter for you. That way they can kind of practice about, you know, what happened during the great dynasties of China or what happened during the age of crusades. And so you can save these and review them throughout the year or even continue to review them or review them throughout your whole history lessons, um, whether it be Story of the World 2, 3, 4, 1, whatever it is, they have them all. So I did want to share this since I did go ahead and purchase this. I don't really know how much I have talked about Story of the World on the channel, but it is something that we do like, we enjoy, and I am glad that I went ahead and purchased this because it was just taking a lot of extra time finding the resources that are already listed in here for me. So that's what I was wanting. I was wanting one, I was wanting some coloring sheets because she likes to color and do things while I'm reading the chapter. And then I also just liked the extra literature that was coordinated with it. So I hope you have found this helpful. If you did, I ask that you give me a thumbs up, consider hitting that subscribe button, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.